So in the previous video, I introduced you to the concept of a finite state machine. I described the various parts of the finite state machine um, and how it operates. In this video, I'm going to focus on how to design finite state machines. Um, if we are given some kind of a process, how can we model that process using a finite state machine? Um, so let's talk about what that process looks like. Let's talk about how we actually design our, our, our uh, finite state machines. The first thing that we need to do is understand the specification. We need to really have a good understanding of the process that we're trying to model. Um, oftentimes this will be stated in English, so we just write out the description of the process that we wish to model in a few sentences or a paragraph. Uh, it's very good to make sure you have a clear understanding of the specification before you proceed. The next step is going to be figuring out what the circuit should remember. So what is it? about this process that we are trying to model that I must remember. These things will ultimately become states. These will dictate what the states are of our finite state machines. And I should be able to give a clear, well-defined state name to each state that I have defined. If I'm unable to come up with a clear, concise description of a state, then chances are it may be not actually a state after all. Maybe it could be incorporated into an existing state, or maybe it just doesn't apply to uh, the process that we are currently trying to model. The next step after that is to determine the transitions that are going to take place from one state to the next. So I have inputs coming in, which I also need to determine, right? What are my inputs? Based on those inputs and the current state that I'm in, what state am I going to, going to end up in next? Um, so that's the third step, is to actually determine what those transitions are. And then finally, the last step is to construct our state diagram, um, including the outputs. So we also need to include outputs in each of our individual states. Um, I'd like to try an example with you. Uh, the example uh, state machine that I would like to create with you uh, has to do with a garage door opener. So I think most of us have had access to garage door openers. Uh, usually there is one button, right? I click the button and the garage door goes up if it's closed or if it's open, the garage door will go down. Um, most garage doors have a sensor at the bottom such that if the garage door is closing and something gets in the way of the garage door, that it will actually reverse direction because we don't want to close on a person, for example, or a car. So there is some kind of an obstruction detection mechanism. Um, not only that, but most of the time if I uh, click the button to close my garage door and I decide that I made a mistake, right, I can push the button again and it will actually pause the garage door. And then if I push the button one more time, it will actually reverse direction and start opening up again. So the first thing we need to ask ourselves is how many inputs do we have and what are those inputs? In this particular case, I think we have four inputs to deal with. There's the button, which is very clearly an input, right? The sensor also matters, so that sensor that's going to, to detect obstructions also matters. Um, we also care about whether we're at the top or whether we're at the bottom, because that changes how the button performs. If the garage door is open, if it's at the top, then I want the door to move down when I push the button. If I'm at the bottom, if it's closed, then I want the, bush, I want the door to move up when I push the button. So I believe we have those four inputs. Right? Uh, in terms of outputs, I believe we only have two in this particular case. So uh, our outputs are going to be to tell the garage door to open right? or tell the garage door to close. That's really the only thing that we can tell the garage door to do, tell it to open or tell it to close. If neither of those signals right, are active, then we're essentially telling the garage door to stop, to stay in place. Um, so I've already described the behavior, right? That was one of the first things that I described. Uh, the part of the behavior that we're really going to need to be careful about is the part dealing with obstructions. So we really want to make sure that we handle that case clearly because, um, you know, people's safety relies on that aspect of garage doors. So what does this circuit need to remember? Well, there's a few things that this circuit needs to remember. We need to remember um, if we are currently opening or if we are currently closing because that dictates what the button does, right? It also dictates uh, whether or not we're looking for obstructions that might be occurring, right? We also need to remember whether we are currently open or currently closed, right? 
And if we pause the door, if we tell it to start closing and then we hit the button again to pause it, we need to remember that we were closing so that the next time we hit the button, we go in the opposite direction. Um, so I think ultimately what we end up with is something like this. Right? Here's our four outputs. I've got my button, my open close button. I've got my obstruction sensor. And then I've got two sensors that tell us whether the door is at the very top or whether the door is at the very bottom. In terms of outputs, I've got two. One that tells the door to go up, another that tells the door to go down. In terms of behavior, here we see clearly defined behavior in terms of the obstructions that can take place, as well as the pausing behavior that I expect for the door. And then in terms of what we remember, I believe there are six states that we need. Right? So we can take a look at what those states are on this particular slide. So you see I've got uh, open and closed at the very top and the very bottom. Right? So if I'm open and if I'm closed, I have two states for pausing. Because remember, if I'm pausing the, the garage door, I need to remember what direction it was headed in so that when I push the button again, it goes in the reverse direction. And then I have two additional states for whether the door is currently moving, whether the door is currently opening or currently closing. So you can see the first thing that I've done to create my finite state machine is to define my states. I don't have any transitions on this diagram, but what I do have are outputs. So I've actually already labeled the outputs for each one of these states. For the four states in the middle, you can see that the outputs are always off. Right? And then for the other two states, if the door is open, one of my outputs indicates that the door should continue opening. And if it's closing, you can see that the um, outputs uh, indicate that the door should continue closing. In all of these four states here in the middle where the outputs are zero, the garage door will be stopped. It will not be moving. It will only be moving in these two states. Right? I've included uh, a legend up here in the corner to indicate what these bits mean. So the first output bit means we're moving up. The second output bit means we're moving down. So the next thing that I'm going to do to construct my finite state machine is visit one state at a time right, and try to determine what the transitions should be. I'm going to go ahead and start up here at the top in this open state. This means that the door is all the way at the top, right? it's all the way up. So I need to determine where can I go from here? Where can I go uh, from this particular state? Well, if nothing happens, right, if nothing interesting happens, I can actually remain in this state. So as long as nobody's pressing the button, right, or nothing gets in the way, then I'm going to just remain in this particular state, remain where I am. But if somebody pushes that button, as long as there is no obstructions in the way, then I can make the door start to close. So I think I have two transitions here. Let's take a look at what those transitions are. Here is my self transition, right? This one over here means as long as nobody's pushing the button and nothing is in the way, then I'm going to remain in the open state. You see, I have another uh, set of inputs on this self-transition as well that says, if there is an obstruction, right, then remain in this open state. I never want to close the garage door if something is in the way of keeping it closed. By the way, you can tell which bits mean what, again, by taking a look at the legend. The first bit here indicates our button. The second bit indicates whether something is obstructing the garage door. The third bit means that we're at the top. And the fourth bit means that we're at the bottom. So then our other transition says that if somebody pushes the button and there's not an obstruction in the way, then I want the garage door to start closing, moving to the closing state. So you can see here, in all cases, we do not care whether the door is at the top or at the bottom. Right? They are irrelevant to this particular process. So let's talk about the closing state next. This might actually be the most uh, complicated state on this particular diagram. Right? If I push the button while the door is closing, then it's going to pause. It's going to pause in the down position. Right? If I detect an obstruction, then I want it to immediately reverse direction and start opening right away. It's not going to pause, it's just going to start opening. So there's a transition from closing to pause, down, and closing to opening. If there is no obstruction and nobody pushes the button and nothing happens, right, we don't reach the bottom, then I'm just going to remain in this state. I'm just going to continue to close. But if I receive a signal saying, hey, we're at the very bottom, 
there's nowhere else for us to go, then I'm going to move us into the closed state and stop moving the door. So this particular state from the closing uh, state has four transitions, which we need to model. And here, again, are the different transitions from this particular state. We can see the self transition here, right? It says that as long as nothing's getting in the way and nobody touches the, the button and we're not at the bottom yet, then continue closing. This transition here says as soon as we hit the bottom, right, then stop trying to close and move to the closed state. This transition over to opening says if there's an instruction, we need to open right away. And then finally, this transition here says if somebody pushes the button, we need to pause in the down state. Let's take a look at the pause down state next. I believe there's only a couple of transitions from this particular state, right? As long as we're in this state and nobody touches the button, we're just going to remain where we currently are. But if somebody does push the button, then we're going to reverse direction and move to the opening state. And if we take a look at the transitions as spelled out on this diagram, we can see, right, the only bit that we care about is whether or not somebody pushes that button. Just a few more states to go. We can take a look at the opening state next. So if we are in the opening state and somebody pushes the button, we want to pause in the up direction. Right? If nobody pushes the button and we're not already at the top, then we'll remain in the opening state. So that should be a self transition. But if we receive indication that we are at the top, that we've made it to the top of the door, we are going to move into the open state. So there should be three transitions coming out of this opening state, which we can see here. Right? Okay, next if we take a look at pause up, right? Pause going in the up direction. If somebody pushes the button, as long as there is not an obstruction in the way, then we should start closing. Otherwise, if nobody pushes the button, or if there is an obstruction in the way, then we're just going to hang out in the pause up state until one of those things happens. And then finally, the closed state is the last one that we need to talk about. If nobody pushes the button, then we are just going to hang out in the closed state. If somebody does push the button, then we will transition to the opening state. And here's what our final finite state machine looks like. So take a look at this finite state machine, right? Go back to our original specification and convince yourself that this finite state machine actually uh, implements that specification uh, to your satisfaction. In the next video, we'll take a look at how we can take one of these finite state machines and turn it into a logic circuit.